get them to come up while I keep on doing some notices. Holy Week is fast approaching us, so Sunday, uh, next Sunday we have Palm Sunday and then we're into Holy Week. Um, on Wednesday we're off to Bells Hill West for a service there at 7.30. Please do come along if you wish. There's a great big car park if you don't know, just behind um, Bells Hill West by the playing fields where you can park. On Thursday we're then meeting here in the church for a 7.30 service of communion for Monday Thursday. And then we're back here on Friday at 7.30 for a Tenebrae service. Uh, if you weren't here last year or the years before, Tenebrae is like the nine lessons and carols of Easter. Um, and the church gets progressively darker as the night goes on. So it's a really beautiful service to come along to. And then on Easter Sunday itself, uh, we have our normal service at 10.30. And it's a communion being Easter Sunday. So please come along to that wonderful service. Matt. Good morning. Uh, I'm here to speak about the Crucifixion, which is our annual Come and Sing event, which takes place next Sunday afternoon. If you are a singer, the rehearsal starts at 2.30 sharp. We have got some scores for people to buy on the day or to borrow should they need to, um, or do come along at 6 o'clock and hear it performed. It's a work that receives mixed reviews because some people don't understand what it's trying to put over. It does put over the last few days of Christ's life from the readings in the New Testament. It takes us all the way from Christ asking, would you not watch with me when the disciples fall asleep, when he's staying up on that terrible night before he is arrested all the way to the crucifixion on the cross. It's told through hymns, it's told through full choir anthems, it's told through wonderful solos and we've got some brilliant soloists this year coming through from Glasgow. Um, we've got a fantastic organist from the Royal Conservatoire as well. And this is the first of our 625 concerts. There'll be five concerts this year aligned to the 625 project. This is the first of those, and we look to raise a good four figures for church funds within this time. Uh, the next one takes place in June. We have uh, Arietta, Janet's choir, coming along to give us a concert in June. Please just watch out for advertising as and when it goes up. As soon as everything is sewn up, I'll get leaflets out to you and things will go up on Facebook and church website and everything. But your attendance is always very well received. But I say it every time I'm up here, you are the best adverts that we've got for any event in church. Please do invite friends or just tell friends that these events are happening. That's how we get people on seats for them. The tickets are £10 a head or £5 for students. And we hope to see as many people as possible there. And for Georgie, you know I always wear my robes, but this morning I'm sporting a green one for St. Patrick's Day. Nothing to do with the rugby only because it's St. Patrick's Day and you'll hear more from me on the organ later about St. Patrick. Thank you all very much. Thank you for your continued support, especially with my poor health. It's nice to be back with you and I look forward to speaking to some of you in the due course of the next few weeks. Thank you. Thank you very much. We won't mention that Scotland got robbed of a trophy yesterday. <laughs> Never mind. What's another year to wait, eh? Um, we begin our call to worship with the words printed in the order of service. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. The Lord makes a new covenant with us and writes the law upon our hearts. 
Let us seek the Lord. And so we start with a song we're going to be singing on Easter morning, but I thought it would be good to practice it. We have sung it before, but it would be great if on Easter Sunday we could just blow the roof off this place with the volume. We know you can sing. We've heard it before. So let's not be nervous. Let's praise God with a loud and wonderful voice as we sing the hymn printed in our order of service, See What a Morning Gloriously Bright. And so we come now to our opening prayers, and as always, please do join in saying the words of the Lord's Prayer with me at the end, whichever version or language you wish to speak to God in, be it shouting out loud or whispered in your heart with him. Let us pray. Loving Lord Jesus, we know that Easter is almost here. We know that we're almost at the empty tomb And whilst we wait anxiously to celebrate your triumphal victory over sin and death, we know there are still many difficult days between now and then. As we come to worship you this day from the pews and from our homes, we fail to comprehend love and mercy so great as yours. We come to worship you as imperfect people, yet you beckon us with hands that will soon be scarred by our betrayal, greed, selfishness, pettiness, pride, and apathy. 
loving Lord Jesus, you welcome us this day with all of our imperfections, with eyes full of compassion and love for us. As we come crying out, let us see you. You call back to us saying, here I am. As we come to worship you and journey with you towards Jerusalem and eventually to Calvary, open our eyes so that we can focus on you and you alone. Loving Lord Jesus, we give thanks. Your love for us knows no boundaries. And we come confessing that, though, that we crowd our lives with so much activity that often it's hard to find time for you. We become so focused on ourselves, we overlook those around us who are searching for hope. We become so caught up in life that though we call out to see you, we are blind to your presence and your love. We confess that we fill our spiritual emptiness with junk rather than feasting on your perfect word. Loving Lord Jesus, forgive us. Open our eyes that we may see your new covenant written in plain sight on our hearts. Open those hearts that we may join you in serving the brokenness of the world. Open our hearts so we may pour out your love as abundantly and as graciously as your love is given to us. So hear our prayers now as we come together with one voice and one hope saying the words you taught us to say, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. So today it's just my fantastic crew here in the front. I don't think, are there any other little ones coming? No, I don't think so. Um, I've taken something from the house today. Mm, what is it? Because I want us to think about the fact that God wants us to be called to him. He wants us to be joined to him, and he wants us to build ourselves together. So I've taken something which I know you guys really like. It's not food. Just going to throw that out there now. It's our magnets. Hang on. So I don't know if you know about these, but these are the best thing we've ever, ever been given. They are amazing. These are magnets. And the thing is, you can build the most amazing structures with them. And so you can build houses and trains and everything else. But I was just remembering that by itself it's not really that useful. I mean, it might make a good coaster for your cup of coffee maybe, but it's not really much use for anything else. Instead, I know whose it is. I know exactly whose it is. <laughs> so I wondered to remind us about the fact that we're all joined together and that God calls us together. We're going to sing a song, and while we're singing the song, could you guys, without fighting... Mummy's shaking her head. <laughs> Could you build something for us? Okay. So we are all going to stand up and sing hymn 356, Meekness and Majesty. And while we're singing, you guys are going to build a structure to remind us that together God calls us to be something amazing. It has to be something together. We're not going to build it apart.
So, while we have been singing, they have been building, and you probably won't be able to see it at the back, but that's okay, because you might see it later, and you can see the creation they built. But the wonderful thing is, if we were to have another box of magnets, we could have built something even bigger. There's always space to build more, and there's always space for more people to come in and to be part of God's family. So no matter how many pieces we have, even if we had a thousand pieces of magnet, even if we built a magnet tower as tall as this building, there would still be space for more because God wants us all in his family. So go and have lots of fun in Sunday school and we'll see you later. I'm not going to break it now. Good morning, everybody. The next reading, the first reading is a responses reading, which is in your service, your order of service, if you all read the words. With my whole heart have I sought you. Well, let me not go astray from your commandments. Your words have I hidden within my heart, and I should not be there against you. Blessed are you, O Lord, Oh, teach me your statutes. I have taken greater delight in the way of your testimonies than in all the manner of riches. My delight shall be in your statutes, and I will not forget your word. Amen.
reading, the reading this morning is taken from John chapter 12, verses 20 to 33. And this is where Jesus predicts his death. Now, there were some Greeks amongst those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip will we sorry Philip went to tell Andrew Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus Jesus said the hour has come for the son of man to be glorified very truly I tell you unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies it remains only a single seed but if he dies it produces many seeds anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it to an eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant will be. My father will honour and honour the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say, Father? Save me from the sour? No. This was the very reason I came to you this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said, said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, this voice was to your benefit, not mine. Now is the time of judgment in the world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to my, myself. And said this to show this kind of death he was about to die. Amen. This ends today's readings from his holy word. And so we stand to sing our next hymn, hymn 553, Just As I Am Without One Plea, hymn 553 in the hymn books.
We heard today in our passage from the Gospel of John the words which were said. Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Let us pray. Lord, God, be with us now wherever you find us. Lord, open our hearts, our eyes, our ears to your amazing love. Lord, may we know you in this place. May we know you in our homes. Bless our words, bless our thoughts, bless our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. How many times... How many times have we asked to see Jesus? Jesus, if only I could see you, then dot, dot, dot. Jesus, where are you? If only I could see you. Jesus, make yourself known to me in this place in this time. I'm sure that we've all asked similar variations of that question. A straightforward request, perhaps. But is it really ever that simple? Maybe it's one of those questions that gets asked more than we could ever realize. In today's gospel story, this is the question that some Greeks ask Philip. He then relays it to Andrew, and then he goes with Philip to Jesus to ask the question directly to Jesus. In the gospel account, we're left wondering if that question was ever answered. Did those Greeks get to see Jesus? Did they leave with more questions than answers? Did they leave disappointed? Were they still there in the crowd when God spoke from heaven. As the crowd heard not a voice, but the sound of thunder, maybe because they weren't actually listening. We aren't told what happens, but maybe that's part of the point of the story. Maybe we have to write the ending to this story for ourselves. Whatever happened, what we do know is that Jesus used the opportunity to teach the crowd about what was to come. So how many of us have found ourselves calling out Jesus only to feel as if we are living in the shadows of worry, of doubt, of war, of confusion? I think it's safe to say that our world is filled with the shadows of sadness, of brokenness, of hurt of pain, of illness, of war. Some of these shadows are very close to home for us indeed. Some may be further afield, but still in our world. As we find ourselves journeying towards the cross this Easter, we're reminded that even the darkness of Calvary brought forth love for the world to know. So here we are, ourselves, in the shadow of Holy Week, which encroaches upon us. And it is here that Jesus gives us the image today of a seed, a grain of wheat. And says, very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies... It bears much fruit. Many of you will know by now that I have found a love of gardening since moving here. It saddens me and perhaps worries me slightly that this year, due to various events, I haven't yet got any of our seedlings going. The garden hasn't been prepared yet as it should have been, and there's still a mountain of work to see ahead of us. Normally by this time of the year, our dining room has been turned into a mini kind of greenhouse 
It gets the most light in our house and it's always warm. And so it's there that we prepare these beds to put the fragile seeds in as we push them down into the darkness of the earth. The soil is dark and damp and probably cold. There might even be the odd bug or worm or two in the compost that we use. As we look at that environment to which those tiny, fragile seeds are planted, it doesn't look very appealing. We certainly don't want to be found in it ourselves, do we? But I wonder if this is the point for Jesus. We cry out that we want to see Jesus but only in those places and those situations that make us comfortable, not those uncomfortable and challenging places. Yet it's in these difficult and dark places that we are called to follow Jesus into. And it's in these places which we are so often led by Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. How much easier would it be to go where we want to go? How much easier would it be to do the things that we want to do? To be able to say what we want to say instead of speaking up for those, well, for those people who don't have a voice. It's far easier to go those places that we wish to go. And it's easy to think that we know where we need to go to flourish and to bloom. And yet I am reminded that unless I take those seeds and push them into that damp, cold earth, they will never flourish. They will never bloom. If I never plant those seeds, they will never become an apple tree or a tomato plant or perhaps a giant, beautiful sunflower. Without going into the darkness of the earth, the seeds would ever, only ever remain just that, a seed. Eventually, the seed would probably rot. Whatever happened, it would be of little value. So if we choose to follow Jesus, it means that we must do that. We must follow Jesus wherever he takes us, especially into the darkness of Holy Week. By following Jesus, we must then allow ourselves to be planted in those most surprising of places. To walk alongside Jesus means to allow ourselves to walk into those unforgiving environments that we would never dare enter or engage in alone and yet with God, with Christ by our side, we can and we do. To be a disciple of Christ means that we must allow new ideas to spring forth and not to uproot them before they can blossom. And for each of us those situations will look different and for some they will often look uncomfortably familiar. So to cry out, let us see you, Jesus, means that we open ourselves up to be planted by the hand of God. By allowing ourselves to be planted by the hand of God allows us to enter places that once terrified us, only to find that they have been transformed into places where we can meet and see God himself. A place that was once dark and forbidding is a place that we are broken open and transformed from tiny, fragile, individual seeds into something better. By the hand and the love of God, we grow into mighty trees. Last year, we did just that in the Mance Garden. We planted four fruit trees. In time, they will bear fruit, not this year, Unfortunately for our children, they watch in hope. But in time, they will produce, we hope, fruit that we can enjoy. But fruit trees are never just a fruit tree by themselves. 
In order to flourish in our changing climates and forbidding environments, the trees have been grafted onto existing trees to combine the qualities of the one's fruit with the other roots in order to have the vigor and resilience and the fruit that we can eat. It's a painful thing that has to happen to be cut, to be sliced, to be grafted and bound onto something else. But we need to allow ourselves to go through that as we're grafted on to God. We must pray that we take the gifts that he's already given us and combine them with his love so that we might find ourselves rooted and anchored to God, allowing us to bend to the trials of life while growing to provide shelter and hope and nourishment for others. Because this is what we are called to do, to follow Jesus into those uncomfortable of places, to see, to wait, and to blossom. It's easy for us to say, what shall I say, Father, save me from this hour, to turn away because life is messy, this all the unsettling. But this is where we need to be grafted to God in the darkness and the messiness of life in order that we might blossom new life and new hope. Let us not forget that Jesus said in the same breath, what shall I say, Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. The horizon of Holy Week is getting closer and we will soon sit at the foot of the cross where Jesus is lifted up on that cross at Golgotha. Soon we will be reminded of the unfathomable love of God. We will once again remember that God is just that love. And he only has love for each of us. The question we need to ask ourselves then is whether or not we will stay at the foot of the cross and have our eyes open to the true cost of our sin and the true love of God or if we will run away preferring not to look or reflect on it. As we face that decision, let us not forget that to be a follower of Jesus means sharing in his whole life. Verse 26 today said, whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am there will be my servant also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. So as we walk towards the place of the skull, Calvary, Golgotha, As we walk there together, we must hold on to the truth. That to be a Christian, to be a follower of Jesus, to be a disciple of Christ means to not only go, but to be planted where Jesus was and where Jesus is. To be doing what Jesus did and what he still does. To have the goals that Jesus had and still has. To share a message of peace, not one of division, to reach out to the broken, to give a place of love for the homeless and the lost and the lonely, to see that Christ is in each and every one made in God's image, to love those who the world has forgotten to love. So what will a church drawn by the crucified Jesus be like? A church driven by a desire to serve him and only him engaged in what he was and is engaged. And what will a church be like that draws people to Christ? What will a church grafted to Christ truly look like in our society today? What will we look like? What will we look like when we graft ourselves to Christ once again?
as we anchor ourselves to his love, planted with him in the shadow of this world. Because I believe if we allow ourselves to be grafted to Christ, to God, we'll find that our eyes are opened and that we will see Jesus. That we will see Jesus in our world all around us as his light and his love breaks through those shadows. As we allow the one who hung on a blood-stained cross for us to transform us into his disciples. Disciples ready to be planted in the worry, the stress, and the pain of our world, grafted to him and him alone. I believe if we allow ourselves to do that, that we will see the darkness be pushed away and love break forth forevermore. Amen. Let's take a moment to pray, to reflect and to be with God as we listen to Matt. We come now to our prayers, and this week we have responses. When you hear the words being said, may we see you, Jesus, to respond with the words in bold, open our hearts to see your face. And we begin our prayer with those words. Let us pray. God of love, may we see you, Jesus, open our hearts to see your face. God of love, where we see hypocrisy and judgment dividing your church, we wish and we yearn and we call out to see you, Jesus. Help us to see you at work in unlikely communities, in the bread and cup shared, in imperfect expressions of love, and in fruit born of discipleship. Where we see pride and violence tormenting the nations, may we see you, Jesus. Open our hearts to see your face. God of love, help us to see you at work in the vulnerable and the afraid, in the poor and afflicted, that we may see you glorified, overturning structures of oppression, where we see destruction and greed wreaking havoc on the earth. We call out, may we see you, Jesus. God of love, help us to see you at work in the ground that hides 
from our sight and the seed that will grow to bear fruit and in your broken body that is made whole and raised up to bring new life. May we see pain and sorrow, may we see you, Jesus. Loving Lord, help us to see you at work in the suffering and the dying and the cries of forsakenness. Help us to see you glorified, healing all wounds and mending all brokenness. In the silence now, we bring our own pain, our own doubts, and our own prayers for those whom we know and those whom we wish to know more of. In the silence of our hearts, known only to you. May we see you, Jesus, open our hearts to see your face. God of love, as we prepare for your triumphal entry into Jerusalem, grant us the courage to go ahead, to prepare the way, to line the streets and shout your praises. Help us to go out blessed, to live with the freedom to worship you. Grant us the courage to proclaim your love, knowing that in many places on your earth, your disciples face certain death for sharing your love, and yet they choose not to remain silent. As we pray for those brave disciples across the globe, we pray, may we see you, Jesus. Open our hearts to see your face. Help us to see you, God of love, at work in your world and all around us, in the expected and the unexpected places. Help us to see you and to know you, Lord, in these and all our prayers, bearing the fruit of your glory, for it is in your name that we pray this day. Amen. So we finish today's worship by standing to sing our final hymn, hymn 436, Christ Triumphant, hymn 436.
out into the world, grafted to Christ, proclaiming the good news that we love because he loved us first. To go with the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And may his blessing rest upon you, upon those whom you love, and upon those who struggle to love this day. Amen.